So today we're going to look at five amazing shots and in this video we're going to rate them in terms of difficulty to execute the shot and also the importance of the shot, so what the context was of the shot during the frame and during the match as well. Just a reminder, if you are new to these videos and you haven't subscribed, please consider subscribing and hitting the bell for notifications so you don't miss any future uploads. So let's get into the video and look at these shots. Right, so what I've done is I've picked five different shots from five different players. So we've got a shot from Stephen Lee, we've got a shot from Judd Trump, a shot from Jimmy White, Ronnie O'Sullivan and Alex Higgins. And we're going to have a look at each one of these shots and we're going to rate them as we said at the beginning of this video. So let's start with this shot from Stephen Lee. So we can see that Stephen Lee's on the blue here and he needs to get position on this last red. Now, the way he actually plays this shot is he plays it with bottom and left hand side to come round the two cushions and then he finally hits that third cushion and gets on the red. So let's watch Stephen play this shot. So you can see he's having to bridge off the cushion here, so that's making the shot a little bit more difficult. And then he really gets through the white, it comes off the two oh, cushions, that off that shot? third cushion, leaving this him a nice red. shot on that red. Oh, so let's have a look at playing shot. this shot that's then. The so shot. I've got the same shot set up here. And like we just talked about, we know that Stephen Lee was playing that shot with bottom and left hand side. But let's first have a look at why we need to use that bottom and left hand side. Let's say we played bottom and right hand side on this shot. Let's see what would happen with the white. So I'm playing bottom and right hand side here. And you can see that when the white hits that first side cushion, it dies a little bit and then it causes it to die even more off that black cushion. And it doesn't spring off those two cushions and towards that red. And that's why we need the opposite side here, the left hand side to accelerate the white off those two cushions. So let's have a go at trying to play that shot then. So I'm playing bottom and left hand side, got to really try and get through the white. And you can see that I've managed to get that shot there off the two cushions, off that third cushion and nicely onto that red there. OK, so let's rank this shot then. So in terms of difficulty to execute the shot, I'd say that shot is very difficult. I had a few goes at that. It didn't take me too long to get this one. I would say that shot in terms of difficulty, probably about a seven out of ten. And now let's look at the importance of that shot. So it's in a major ranking tournament, it's a China Open. The frame scores are 2-2 there, so Stephen's level with Mark Williams at two frames all, and he does need that red, and then he needs up to, I think, something like the blue or pink in order to win the frame. So it's not at a massively crucial stage of the match, but you obviously want to go ahead at this point in the match. It's not all or nothing, but he would like to get on the red and try and win the frame. So I'm going to give that shot, in terms of importance, a 6 out of 10. Okay, so shot number two, this is a shot by Jimmy White, and a lot of people in my previous video asked me to try and replicate this shot. So let's have a look at the shot that Jimmy played. So you can see that the white's by the side cushion here. He's got the pink over the pocket and he plays this pink and he hits it really hard. And then all of a sudden we see that the white just comes to an absolute standstill. So he hits it very hard with a lot of power. And then all of a sudden it looks like it defies the laws of physics there and the white just comes to a stop. So let's have a look at how Jimmy played that shot then. So first of all, I've got this shot set up again. So let's have a look at if we played it with top spin, but we didn't use enough power. So I'm going to hit this shot with top spin. So just like Jimmy did, but I'm not going to hit it um, as anything like as hard as Jimmy did. And let's watch what happens with the white ball. So you can see the white goes off the side cushion and it just comes back across the table. So we didn't get that effect that Jimmy had. OK, so let's play this shot again. Let's hit just below centre on the white and see what happens with this one. So again, I've got the pink in a similar position. White's there. I've hit the shot and you can just see that the white now has stunned off that pink and it's actually come up the table and away from the black. OK, so let's set the shot up again. Right, and now we're going to try and replicate the shot that Jimmy played. So this one is going to use lots and lots of topspin. When the white hits the side cushion, what's going to happen because of all that topspin and the massive power that you've used is it will bounce off the side cushion, but then because of all that topspin, the white's going to want to carry on forwards, and that's what causes it to suddenly put the brakes on and just stop on the spot. So instead of coming back towards where I'm standing, all of a sudden that topspin grabs and then it runs out and it just causes the white to stop on the spot. So let's have a go at that shot. I'm going to play one of those. So a lot of topspin on the shot, hit the shot, and you can see there that I've replicated that shot very well there, and I've got the, sh the uh, white to stop just like Jimmy did. Okay, so let's rank this shot. So in terms of difficulty to execute the shot, this shot actually surprisingly is not that difficult to get right. I had a few good attempts where I got the white to stop. This one was probably the best one, but I could, I'd probably say that 50% of the time you get a, I was getting a very good effort at getting that shot right. So in terms of difficulty, probably about a four or a five out of 10. And in terms of importance, I think this was actually an exhibition match between Willie Thorne and Jimmy White. So there's not really much importance on the shot. One, 
I'm going to give it in terms of importance. It doesn't matter whether he gets this shot right. Exhibitions are purely for a bit of fun, so there's nothing riding on the shot. It was a great shot, played incredibly well, and it looks fantastic. So let's move on to the next shot. Now, shot number three is this incredible green to brown that we saw from Judd Trump in the German Masters only a few days ago. So let's have a look at the shot. So we see that Judd Trump has got this green and he's very close to the side cushion. He hits this green and all of a sudden, very similar to Jimmy's shot there, we see that Judd just gets the white to all of a sudden come to a standstill and stay on that brown. So let's have a look at this shot. So I showed this shot a few days ago. If we just play topspin on this shot and we don't hit it very hard, so you can see that I'll pop the green, but the white is just going to come straight down the table. It doesn't have that effect that Judd got and it comes the wrong side of the brown. The other way we could play this shot is you can try and dig down on the white a little bit, get just below centre, that's another way. But again, you can see that I've potted the green, but the white just comes straight down the table, right down towards the black and pink area again. So the way we've got to play this shot is using a lot more power and you've got to get lots of topspin on and then get that same effect that we just talked about with Jimmy's shot. So let's have a look at that again. I've played that shot and I've got the white to almost do what Judd's did there. It's come down the table a little bit further than Judd's. Um, but I did get that nice effect with that banana effect that we call it with that top spin. Okay, so the difficulty of the shot, how, would I, how much would I rate this one? I would say that this shot, probably the most difficult shot that I've ever tried to replicate. So I'm going to give this shot a 9 out of 10 in terms of difficulty. Very, very difficult to try and get right. Um, I did have a few attempts that were quite close, but it is very difficult to execute reliably. In terms of importance, the frame was completely won by this point. Judd was already on a century. So it was in a major ranking event, but it doesn't really matter whether he pops the green or not. The frame is long since won. So again, not very important here, just a two or, two or a three. And I'm going to call it just a two in terms of importance. Now, shot number four, this is by Ronnie O'Sullivan. And this was an absolutely incredible shot. So this is a shot that Ronnie was faced with. And Ronnie's actually on a 147 here. So he's potted 14 reds and blacks. And then he's faced with this red up into the green pocket. And the thing that makes this shot incredible is that Ronnie actually is obviously a right-handed player. He can't reach this shot with his right hand, so he's going to have to flick to play in the shot with his left hand and try and screw all the way back to the black. So let's watch Ronnie play this shot. Now, obviously, on this shot, you're playing right at the bottom of the white, maximum screw back. And that's all Ronnie's trying to do, just leaving a decent shot. And you can see that he's managed to hit that incredibly well there with that screw screwed it all the way back down the table and left himself a shot on that black. Okay, so let's try and play this shot. And first of all, I just wanted to show this. So I'm the same as Ronnie. Obviously, I'm a right-handed player. Now, if I'd got this shot over the other side of the table where I can just reach with my right hand, it's not that much of a difficult shot. You would feel like you should be able to pop the red and screw back. So you can see that I've managed to pop that red and screw all the way back for the black there. But obviously, the thing that makes this shot incredible is we're on the other side of the table now. So I've set this shot up exactly like Ronnie's. And obviously, you've got to switch to using your opposite hand here. And it's really difficult because you're really trying to get all that timing that we always talk about with that screw that we want on the white to get all the way back for the black. So let's have a go at playing this. So I'm on the other side of the table, do my feathers up. And you can see that I've managed to get that shot there. Got nice screw back. It's coming all the way down the table and leaving me a nice shot on the black there. OK, so let's have a look at that shot. In terms of difficulty, because you're having to use your left hand and it's a deep screw shot, very difficult to get right. Eight or nine out of ten, I'm torn between the two. I'm going to say, because I'm used to playing with my left hand quite a bit now, I'm going to call that shot eight out of ten in terms of difficulty. And let's talk about the importance then. So how important was that shot? Well, he's on a 147. It's in a major ranking tournament, and it's in the frame that he needs to win the tournament as well. So again, really important moment, and it's going to make for an incredible bit of history as well. So again, I'm going to call that 8 out of 10 in terms of importance for a 147. It's to win the tournament and it's in the, the final frame there. So incredible. Right, so our fifth and final shot is by the great Alex Higgins. So he made an incredibly famous 69 break that people have probably seen on YouTube. But this shot stands out in that break. This shot is always talked about this famous shot on the blue. So Alex is faced with this blue here and he needs to try and pop the blue and get position well, on the reds. Position. And this is what Alex does. He chooses to feather up to the shot here. You can see he's taking the blue on into the green pocket and he's screwed the white off the side cushion, off the other side cushion and right down towards those reds. He's actually got into the white too well there and left the white a little bit low on those reds, leaving him another tricky shot. Right, so I've set myself up with the same shot that Alex Higgins have got on the blue here. And we know that Alex Higgins is incredibly famous for his real flair and the way he used to throw the cue up in the air and move on the shot. 
Now actually on this blue, you don't really need to do that. That was Alex's flamboyant style of play, but you don't have to hit this shot hard enough for the cue to be flying around too much. You can actually get enough screw on the shot without worrying too much about the cue going all up in the air and losing control. So first of all, let's have a look. If I just play this shot with screw, no side spin on the white, just purely screw back. You can see that my white comes off the side cushion, but it's not gonna come far enough down the table. It's left it very high. It hasn't really come down the table very far. So if I set the shot up again, the way Alex actually played this shot is with bottom and left-hand side. And the left-hand side is going to help the white to come further down the table towards where the pink and black spot area is and hopefully leave himself a shot on one of those reds. So let's have a look at me playing that shot. So I'm gonna, again, just like Alex, do my feathers up. You can see that I've hit the shot and the white's come off the side cushion. And then this time the left-hand side has helped it come further down the table. And actually I've deliberately there because I'm trying to replicate the shot brought the white too far down and the white's a little bit out of position. So Alex would have been hoping if I just quickly set that shot up again, if I play the same thing, bottom and left hand side, but I just play it a little bit softer, Alex would have been hoping really to do something like this to have potted the blue, come off the side cushion and then leave yourself where you've actually got a shot on the next red. So he actually left himself very slightly out of position. Okay, so let's rank this shot. So in terms of difficulty, how difficult is it to get that shot right? It's actually not a very difficult shot. The pot on the blue is a little bit tricky, which makes the shot a bit more difficult. But in terms of actually executing it reliably, you would expect to pot this more often than not with a little bit of left-hand side. So I'm gonna call it five out of 10 in terms of difficulty. In terms of importance, it's an incredibly important point in a match. This is the semi-finals of the World Championships. It used to be first to 16 uh, when this shot was played in 1982. So Jimmy White is actually 15, 14 up at this point. So if Alex was to miss at any point, Jimmy only needs this frame and he's through to the final of the World Championships. So in terms of importance, incredibly important part of the match, semi-finals are the biggest tournament in the world. So again, I'm gonna call this an eight out of 10. Might not have cost him the frame if he would have missed it, but it was still incredibly important. So that's why it's getting that rating. So I think you'll agree there, all of those shots, absolutely fantastic. But which one did you think was the best shot there? So let me know in the comments below, which was your favorite. As always, if you did enjoy this video, please remember to give it a like. If you're new to the channel and you haven't subscribed, please consider subscribing. That just helps me to keep this content coming. I do lots of fun videos like this one, and I also do lots of instructional videos on the channel as well. If anyone's interested in any personal one-to-one -one coaching sessions, you can visit my website at www.bartonsnooker.co.uk. And as always, thanks for watching, everybody. Catch you in the next one. Cheers.